The Watchers were a group of angels tasked with keeping track of humanity's deeds and growth. These angels abandoned their celestial throne and journeyed to Earth to experience the human realm. One of the fallen angels' first acts was to breed with human women. The giants, the Nephilim, literally the fallen ones, and the men of renown were hybrids born from the union of these fallen, rebellious spirits and human females. A scroll known as the Book of Giants was discovered among the first seven scrolls recovered in the Qumran caves near the Dead Sea. It is supposed to be based on the Book of Enoch, a pseudepigraphical Jewish text from the 3rd century BC, which narrates this event. The Watchers and their evil progeny are the focus of both the Book of Giants and the Book of Enoch. There are two primary versions of the text. Aramaic is used in the Dead Sea version. Another version, written in Middle Persian and converted from Aramaic to fit into the Manichaean religion, has been discovered. Both versions will be compared and contrasted. We'll try to piece the two manuscripts back together to tell the whole account of the Watchers and the Nephilim, based on theories that the Book of Giants was previously a component of the Book of Enoch. Enoch, the Patriarch, was as well known among the ancients as he is unknown among current Bible readers. The Book of Genesis tells little about him except that he walked with God for 365 years and then he was not since God had removed him, Genesis 5 verse 24. Enoch became a figure of immense curiosity as a result of his lofty way of life and unexplained death, and a cycle of legends sprang developed around him. Many of the Enoch traditions were collected in various vast anthologies in ancient times. The Book of Enoch, which contains over 100 chapters, is the most important and oldest of these anthologies. It is still extant in its whole although only in Ethiopic and serves as a key source for Judaism's ideas in the last few centuries BC. Several nearly complete copies of the Book of Enoch in Aramaic were discovered among the Dead Sea Scrolls, indicating that whoever collected the scrolls thought it was a vitally important document. The Book of Giants retells a portion of this story and expands on the adventures of the giants, particularly Ohia and Haya, Shemahaz's two children. Because there is no entire manuscript of giants, its exact contents and order are a matter of conjecture. The present fragment's content is mostly concerned with the giants' terrible dreams and Enoch's attempts to interpret them and intercede with God on their behalf. Unfortunately, little is known about the giants' individual exploits, but it is possible that they were based on ancient Near Eastern mythology in some way. Gilgamesh the Babylonian hero and subject of a major epic composed in the 3rd century BC, is the name of one of the giants. Now, there were 200 demons that arrive on the earth. The other heavenly angels were agitated by their descent from heaven. They come because of the attractiveness of the women they saw on earth. To attract these women, they expose forbidden arts and celestial mysteries and they bring disaster to the planet. Enoch cautions that the 200 demons' arrival will only result in hurting speech and hard labor. They enslave the human species by slaughtering hundreds of thousands of the righteous in battle, forcing beautiful women to marry them, and enslaving the nations. However, Enoch was veiled by the angels against their cruel acts. Let me give you the rundown summary of all that transpired in the first book of Enoch. The faithful will be consumed by fire, as Enoch the sage mentioned. Sam or Ohaya and Patsam, Nariman, and Mahaya or Haya are the two giant sons of Amazad, Emahaza, 1 Enoch chapter 6 verse 3, and 9 verse 7. The rest of the giants are spawned by the other demons and Yaxas. The giants mature and wreak havoc on the planet and humanity. Humanity's wailing stretches to the heavens. According to Mani's cosmology, Yima is a transmogrification of the Jewish God who receives humankind's adoration and pleas for assistance. An angel among the fallen angels boasts that Sam and his brother will govern and live forever because of their unrivaled strength and might. And another gets robbed of his wife by the giant Hobabi or Humbaba. Then the giants get into a fight and start killing one other and other creatures. Sam and his brother actually planned to be the kings of the fallen angels. Sam appears to have had a dream about a tablet being tossed into the water. 
It appears to have had three signs, doom, flight, and devastation. Nariman has a vision of a garden with rows of tree. There are 200 of something, possibly trees, listed. Another angel recites a set of proverbs that contain contrasts, usually between smaller and greater or derivatives from the original. Nariman describes what he witnessed in his dream. There were several who were weeping and lamenting, as well as many immoral rulers. As he flies along at sunrise, the giant Mahawe, son of Viridad or Barakel, hears a warning voice and is directed to safety by Enoch the Apostle and the Heavenly Voice, who warns him to descend before the sun burns his wings on fire, as in shades of Icarus. When he lands, the voice directs him to Enoch. Then Enoch interprets the dream, claiming that the trees represent the Egregoroi, Greek for watchers, 1 Enoch chapter 12 verse 4 and others, as well as giants born of women. The trees are then ripped out by something. Then it was reported that he was told not to flee but to carry the message written on two stone tablets and display it to Nariman first. He's brought them to share the contents of one tablet with the giants, which pertains to the demons. Amazad advises him to read Enoch's writing. The Apostle Enoch sends a word of judgment to the demons and their children, telling them that they will have no peace and that their children, the giants, will be destroyed. Enoch chapter 14 verse 6, Enoch chapter 16 verse 3 and Enoch chapter 4 verse 22. He was referring to someone who has ruled for 120 years, perhaps the giants Genesis 6 verse 3. Then he either forecasts a period of earthly fecundity, presumably after the flood. First Enoch chapter 10 verse 11 to 22, or the flood itself Genesis 7 verses 8 to 9. Psalm then urges the other giants to brighten up and eat, but they are too sad to do so and fall asleep instead. Mahaway explains everything to Anbush and Apistim, either another giant or another name for Enoch. Psalm has a dream in which he ascends to heaven when Mahaway returns. He sees the earth's water being consumed by heat, and a demon emerges from the water. Although some beings, such as the guardian spirits, are unseen, he can see the heavenly rulers. A discussion between Sam, Amazad, and Mahawe. Viridad, Mahawe's father, is mentioned. There are some cryptic references to weapons, as well as a blessing for someone who witnessed something but did not die. Sam and Mahawe are on the lookout for something. Despite assurances from someone that Mahawe will be safe from Sam, Sam and Mahawe have a falling out and begin fighting. The evil demons are overjoyed to meet the Apostle Enoch and gather timidly in front of him. They appear to promise to change their ways and plead for compassion in 1st Enoch chapter 13 verse 4 to 6 and verse 9. Despite their confidence that they would never lose their misused power, Enoch informs a group of demons that they will be pulled from a fire to suffer eternal damnation. He also mentions their sinful misbegotten sons, the giants, in Genesis 6 verse 3, describing how the righteous will fly over the flames of torment and gloat over the souls within it. The evil demons then kidnap some heavenly helpers. As a response, angels descend from heaven, terrifying the 200 demons who disguise themselves as humans and hide among them. Enoch chapter 17 verse 1 in the book of Enoch. The angels separate the human beings from the demons, seize the giants from the demons, and lead the giants' children to safety in 32 distant towns prepared for them by the living spirit at Aryan Wezen, the Indo-Iranian's traditional homeland near the sacred Mount Sumeru, and other mountains. The arts and crafts were created by these people. The 200 demons attack the four angels in a tremendous and fiery combat. Three of the giants are killed in battle by Atenbush, who is accompanied by watchers and giants. Also dead are an angel and others. Ohia and Ahia vow to uphold their commitment to fight, and they brag about their abilities. By divine authority, the four angels lock the Egregoro in an unending prison and annihilate their children. 1 Enoch chapter 10 verse 11 to 14, Jubilee chapter 5 verse 6 and 10, and 1 Enoch chapter 10 verse 15, chapter 15 verse 8 to 12, and Jubilee chapter 5 verse 7 to 9, and 11. 
This prison had been erected for the Egregoroi behind the mountains even before their rebellion. Furthermore, before the giant's wicked and long-lived sons were even born, 36 villages had been constructed for their occupancy. And they vanished, says Ohia, or Ahia, the primeval monster Leviathan, and the archangel Raphael, after a great struggle. Ohia, according to one legend, survived the flood and fought this fight afterward. Between the time of Enoch and the period of King Vishtasp, 3,280 years elapsed who ruled at the time of the prophet Zoroaster, who along with Buddha and Christ, was an apostle who came before the final apostle Mani. Thank you for your support.